Okay, so here we are getting into uh, HSRP and also a little bit of port security as well. Um, I'm also going to do a little bit of some OSPF configuration for you guys as well. Um, and maybe a little bit of DHCP as, as well, just to kind of round it up. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, <clears throat> all I've done so far is I'm on router zero right over here, uh, left-hand router. Um, and only configuration that I've started is just starting to configure the G00 interface um, and get it ready for communication on things. So um, I set up, went into the G00 interface, turned it on, went in and created the sub interface, and then assigned it to VLAN 10 and placed the IP address on it um, overall. Uh, so we're also going to go into RNG00.20. Um, because I am going to be using both VLAN 10 and also uh, VLAN 20 over here. So the respective networks for those two are 10.0/24 and 20.0/24. So um, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do encapsulation.1q20, and then we're also going to go in and set the default gateway here. Um, now we're going to have to change this a little bit actually. So um, we're going to use dot two as our address and then we're also going to go in here and we're going to change our address to be um, dot two as well um, <clears throat> and i'll explain that here in just a little bit so we're also going to go through and set up the rest of our interfaces um, so our g01 interface i set to 10.0.0.2 at 252 and make sure that interface is on um, so then we'll go over to our other router uh, and we're going to do the same thing as well on this side so we're going to go to G00 turn that port on we're going to go into our G00.10 encapsulation.1q10 and we're going to place an IP address on here. Um, so once I get this configured, I'm going to explain a little bit about what we're actually doing and why we're doing it this way. Um, but this essentially is our configuration for HSRP. So same thing, we're doing .1q20. And then we're placing our next address here as well okay so with HSRP we have what's known as actual IP addresses and then we also have virtual um, IP addresses and so on our router one here our actual IP address um, for uh, VLAN, say, 10, is the 192.168.10.3 address. And then how HSRP works is they share, um, they, they share a unique IP address um, between, or they share a, 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 a joint IP address between the two routers. Um, so both interfaces or both routers still have to have unique IP addresses that only belong to them uh, that aren't going to be used for anything else. Um, so we still can't have IP address overlaps, um, except we can when we're setting up HSRP. So um, for our virtual IP address, it's our shared IP address is the gateway address between the two devices. Um, so it's the what would typically be the gateway for that network. So then we also have router zero over here. And its actual IP address that I set was 192.168.10.2. And then the shared virtual IP that we're getting right here is still 10.1 as well. And then we're doing the same thing over for VLAN 20 as well. It's just using 20.2 on router 0 and 20.3 over on router 1 
but their shared virtual IP address that they're going to have between the two sides is also going to be uh, 20.1, so the actual gateway. Um, so what HSRP does, and the purpose of it is, is that it allows for a backup uh, path out of our network. So uh, we can pick a primary route and then a backup route. So if PC0 needs to get out to, say, the internet, uh, its primary route would probably be the fastest path, which is up for router 0, and then going out to the internet. But in case router 0 goes down and we want a redundant network, we can set up HSRP and allow, say, router 1 to act as the gateway for PC0 as well. And it will respond to 192.168.10.1 just the same as our router 0 over here. So both devices will be, can be the default gateway for PC0 or PC1. Um, the important thing to note with HSRP, however, is that only one router can be uh, working at the time um, in terms of which one is active and which one is currently in a standby state. So for configuring our devices uh, and configuring HSRP, <coughs> how we go about doing that is we go into our uh, sub-interface of G0.10 uh, and we create what's known as a standby. Uh, and we p place the number. Uh, the standby number, uh, that number one that I just put down, is the HSRP group number. So this number must match between uh, both routers um, for each individual network. So I'm going to say 10 um, as, as that specific, or 1 as for VLAN 10. So we'll say standby 1, and then we place the IP where we say IP, and then we type in the shared IP address between the two sides. So this is the virtual shared IP address between the two area. Um, oops, um, we want <laughs> we want ten dot one. So you'll see if you put in the wrong IP address, it's not on the same network. It will give you a warning, which is kind of nice. Now, the other thing to kind of note is that we do have some additional commands that we typically want to ha uh, set here. Now, by default, um, how each router kind of determines whether it's a active or a passive device is based off of what's known as a priority number. By default, our priority number is 100. So each router has a priority number of 100. Um, so, uh, and the router with the largest priority number becomes the active router, so it becomes the primary router um, that's actually do working on things. So what we want to do is, uh, in my case, I want router 0 here to act as the primary for VLAN 10, so we'll say standby 1, and we'll change the priority to just be a little bit higher than 100, so I just choose 101. So now router 0 will automatically become um, that primary device. And then the other thing that we want to do is, right now how HSRP works is it will only track the state of the physical interface on G00. Um, so only if that link goes down on G00 will it switch over and allow router 1 to be the primary. So what happens if G01 goes down, however? Well, it won't do anything. It'll still act as if it's fine. Well, that's a problem. So we want to make sure that it's tracking not just the state of G00, which it does by default because that's the interface of where this command exists, but we also want to track the other side as well to make sure that it's tracking that interface. And we can do that command with the standby1 track command and then you can specify the interface that you want to track. So I want to track the gigabit01 interface. And then the final command that we want to enter in <coughs> is what's known as preempt. What this command does is it will allow the standby router to forcibly take over as the active router if the priority of the active router drops to less than the priority of the standby number. So what does that mean? Well, basically, if my router fails, so if one of those two interfaces goes down, it will. what my router does is it will automatically drop its priority number below a certain level, below by 5, so it will drop down um, to 96, 
and because that's lower than 100, the other router will, uh, router 1 will become the active router, and then we'll actually start sending traffic, <coughs> or now take over as the default gateway. Well, when router 0 comes back online, let's say we fix the problem on G01 or G00, we want it to be the primary again, and so what the preempt will do is it will, once everything's green lighted, the priority number will go back up to 101, and we want it to check, to basically do a priority check between the two routers and say, hey, which I'm the, uh, let's check priority numbers and whoever's the highest gets active. So preempt forces that check to occur so that router zero, when it comes back online, can become the active router again. So that's all, so those are our commands. So we're gonna go into our G00.20, and we're gonna do the same thing, um, but we are using a different standby number here because it's for a different network. So we're gonna say standby two and place the IP address um, for that shared virtual IP for that network, which would be 20.1. And then we'll do the, the same type of commands. Um, standby to track um, G01. And I want actually router one to be the primary. Um, and I don't want um, router zero to be the primary for VLAN 20 here. So we're gonna leave off um, the changing of the priority or preempt in this case. So now we can see those states are up. So now we're gonna go over to our other router and we're gonna do the same thing. Um, I'm currently on the uh, G00.20 subinterface. So we're gonna go ahead and just work on this interface. So we'll say standby two IP and the shared virtual IP address between the two. And then we're going to change the priority number to be higher because we want VLAN 20 to be the primary on router one. And then we're going to also track, oops, our G01 interface. And we're gonna place standby to preempt to make sure that because it's the primary, it'll take over um, when it comes back. And we're gonna go into our G00.10 and we'll do the same thing we'll say standby one because remember that's the shared number uh, HSRP group number that we're using and we're going to apply our shared virtual IP address here and we're also going to track our G01 interface so now that that's configured um, HSRP is all configured, but we need to go through and we need to configure our switches as well um, because right now I haven't done any configuration. But if we want to look at what these configs actually, actually look at, we can do a sh do show run and we can see our configs that we have on our physical interfaces. So we have our G00, we have our sub interface with our standby configuration and our encapsulation.1q and our our actual IP address so it's our unique IP and then our shared virtual IP address and then same thing for our G00.20 so over on our switch so we're on the switch 0 um, the bottom left switch over here we're going to go into conf t and we're going to go and um, start creating our VLAN. So we're gonna say VLAN 10, VLAN 20, and VLAN 99. And then we're going to activate each one of these VLANs. Make sure they're in an up state when we're working on, with them. And then we're going to start configuring our trunk links as well. So we're gonna go into FA01, and we'll say switch port mode actually we can do a range here because we have two trunk links that are going to be exactly the same so we can say int fa01 through 2 oops int range and we can say switch port mode trunk to set them to a trunk state 
and then we can specify what's going to be accessed. So we can say switch port trunk allowed VLAN 10 comma 20. Switch port trunk native and set our native VLAN to 99. And then switch port no negotiate. Um, and then I'm also going to shut these ports down for the time being because what's going to happen uh, until I, I set up switch one over here is it's going to constantly send out um, native VLAN mismatch errors until I fix both sides. So um, a trunk link won't form if uh, native VLAN doesn't match. So next thing that we're going to do though is we're going to go into our FA03 and we're going to set up our uh, uh, this interface um, for access and tell it what to access. So we're going to say switch port mode access and we're going to tell it what it's accessing and it's accessing VLAN 10. So switch port access VLAN 10. And now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at port security. Um, so for port security we're going to want um, we can do a couple of different things. Um, but what port secu security does is it has a couple of different configs that we can kind of look at. So we can specify um, a MAC address, um, so it will hold and look at specific MAC addresses. We can set a maximum number um, of MAC addresses that are allowed per interface. Uh, and then we can also specify what happens if, say, uh, there's a violation, such as uh, it exceeds the number of ma uh, MAC addresses that are allowed on or that I've specified on a specific interface. Now, port security is used and it's very useful for um, stopping uh, potential attacks where an attacker it has physical access to our actual network. So if there's say like someone's a guest um, and walks around in our building, um, we can put these types of ports uh, security on to ensure that you know an attacker isn't uh, able to access uh, certain aspects of our network. Um, that being said, probably the best way to ensure that uh, people aren't able to just plug into things uh, is just turn off your port if it's not being used. But for um, other forms of, say, like protecting ports that currently are in use, uh, we can utilize port security to cut down and limit uh, potential attacks as well. So port security, very important. Um, and so we're going to look at a couple of different options for setting up port security. So the first thing, and probably the one, uh, we have two ways of kind of setting MAC addresses um, in port security. We can either manually type in what the MAC address is, um, which you can do, but it's kind of a pain because it's 48 bits. Or you can use dynamic mode, which is sticky, which means that it will just grab whatever the first interface is. Um, and, or whatever device first communicates and goes through there. So we say switch port MAC address sticky. Now, the other option that we have, uh, thing that we can do is we want to set a number of maximum violations. So by default, I'm just gonna set it to two. So I'm allowing two MAC addresses per interface. So there can be two MAC addresses on FA03 stored in its CAM table. If it exceeds two MAC addresses, then it will enter into a violation mode. And then with our port security, we have our violation mode. And violation, we have three options. We have protect, restrict, and shut down. Um, by default, um, our ports are going to be in what's known as the shutdown mode. So what that does is it will automatically shut down um, that specific interface uh, if uh, thing if we kind of if it hits the violation mode so if it goes over the maximum amount of allowed interfaces or MAC addresses then that will stop that specific uh, thing from occurring now our other modes are protect and restrict um, protect and restrict do very similar things um, in essence, they will also they will essentially put the port into a blocking mode. Both port both options will put it into a blocking mode where it will no longer allow specific traffic to go through, um, but only traffic from that um, MAC address that triggered the violation. 
Um, and then uh, what restrict will do, or what protect will do also is, it, I believe, um, protect will also log the event as well. Um, but otherwise they work very similar. What, but shutdown puts it into a pseudo shutdown phase where you actually have to power cycle the port. So you actually have to go in, shut it down, and then turn it back on. Um, by default, like I sta stated, uh, the port does start in a shutdown mode. Um, so uh, we're just going to leave it at the default mode. So if it's already in the default mode, I don't have to specify anything um, of what the violation should be. However, there is one very important thing to do right now, which is to turn on port security. And to do that, we type in switch port port dash security. Um, if you do, you can do all the configuration for port security like I just did, but until you turn it on with this command, this just switch port port dash security, um, your configs won't do anything. So we have to turn it on. So if we look at our interface, we can see our port security is turned on. We have a maximum of two and we have MAC address sticky. And then because the default mode is already violation shutdown, it's not going to show up even if I manually typed it in. So, um, so uh, just to keep this uh, video from being too long, I'm going to go f through really quickly and just configure switch one. Um, and then I'll kind of show you how everything's kind of working. Okay, so got everything working. So what we're doing right now is just setting up, uh, I'm just going to put static IP addresses on this, uh, on these PCs. Um, and for the gateway, when we're using HSRP, the gateway address for these PCs is the virtual IP address that we're sharing between the two sides. So even though the actual IP address for router 0 is 10.2 and for router 1 it's 10.3, the PC doesn't need to know that and all it needs to know is that its gateway is 10.1. And HSRP will respond and they both are agreeing that they will respond to 10.1 as a shared address dependent on which device is in the active state. So just make sure you remember that when you're kind of configuring your PCs. The default gateway is still the first usable address that you're using here. So I'm going to set up PC1 and this is for 20 and I'm going to just set it to 20.5 and then same thing, the gateway address is still the first usable, which is the shared virtual IP address in HSRP between the two sides. So if we look at our router, what we should see is you can see uh, a couple of things that uh, occurred um, while we were kind of, while I was kind of configuring things. You can see that uh, G's 0, 0.10, which is my VLAN 10 interface, changed to a state of active, so it's currently going to be running and operating as the default gateway. And then the G00.20 interface, uh, which is for VLAN 20, switched over to a standby state, um, and so it is currently going to be on standby. Um, so that's good. Um, so this is kind of working for the most part. Um, I am going to uh, just pause really quickly at this point too and just finish getting these interfaces configured so that everything's all green uh, and then I'll show you kind of some of the commands and how it's working. Okay, so just finished setting up the interfaces. So really quickly we're going to go through and configure um, OSPF as well um, just to kind of show you guys how to do that again as well. Um, so I'm up on the top router over here which is known as router 2. Um, and we're going to start by configuring OSPF. Um, so we're going to say router OSPF 10. And then remember with OSPF what we're doing is we're entering in every network that we're physically connected to. And then we're also entering in our wildcard mask as well. So our two networks that we are physically touching on this router are 10.0.0.30 and 10.0.0.4.30. Um, and that's it. That's all we have to do in order to get OSPF functioning um, for that side. So we're also going to go down to router 0 here, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say router OSPF, and then I'm just picking a process ID of 10. Um, and then same thing, we're going to advertise the networks that we're physically touching. 
with the wildcard mask also. Um, so we have the 10.0 network, we have the 20.0 network, and we also have our 10.0.0 slash 30 network as well. And we'll go over to our other router as well. We'll go into OSPF10, uh, which is just process ID. Remember that number is just locally significant to the router, so it doesn't matter whatever I picked, like 1, 5, 10, 100, um, it doesn't matter. And again, we enter in all the networks that we are physically touching right here. Okay, um, typically we'd also want to put passive interfaces on our command, so I'll just show that on one of these devices. Um, so we use the um, passive interface command, and then remember what passive interface does is it stops OSPF traffic from being sent out towards devices that aren't participating in OSPF. So we don't want to send traffic, OSPF traffic, out our two interfaces that are being sent, uh, actually sending traffic between these two points. And then same thing um, over on here, we don't want to send any traffic out these two interfaces as well. Um, <clears throat> and that's okay, you'll see that it's like, hey, OSPF just broke, and that's because right now it thinks that um, OSPF is tra working between these two points, um, but we don't want OSPF to work between those areas, we just want it to work kind of across this area, um, which is A-OK, -okay. should still work just fine. So um, overall, uh, that is basically setting how we configure HSRP, um, and how we can get uh, everything kind of up and functioning. So um, if you have questions, feel free to reach out, um, happy to help out anytime. Uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys have a good weekend. All right, bye.